Greetings! This is Message from Moses. Again, I'm Troy Newham, the author of 2084, The Search for Love, Hope, and Faith. I recommend the edited edition, which has all the smutty stuff taken out. Unless, of course, you really like smut, in which case, go with the explicit version and enjoy it. It's available on Amazon.com. You can download it to Kindle for 99 cents, or if you are a member of Amazon Prime, you can read it for free through the Lending Library. Again, word of mouth is very pot, uh, important, so if you like it, please recommend it to all your friends. Now, today I would like to talk about President Obama's decision not to enforce the immigration laws, which I'm going to call Dream Act Light. Couldn't get Dream Act passed, so this is his solution. Now, of course, a lot of people out there are going to say, this is unconstitutional! And I see your point, but I disagree. Because the Founding Fathers did not want bad laws passed nor enforced. And this is a way around a bad law. If a Congress and a President sign in a law that the people find abhorrent, then the next President can come along and say, I am not going to enforce this law. And people might be like, well, this is the kind of guy that we need. And let him in. And let's face it, he's the key executive officer. He is in charge of enforcing the laws. He doesn't have unlimited resources. As such, he's going to have to allocate his resources based on what he thinks is important. If he thinks stopping the drug trade is important, he might put most of his uh, resources over there. If he doesn't think illegal immigration is important, maybe he doesn't put as much. And it's up to the people in the next election to vote him out of office if he does that. And we disagree. So let's look closely at the DREAM Act. First of all, I want to get past this notion that every illegal who's over here is a true American at heart and loves this country. Because that's bullcrap. There are plenty that are here just for the stacks. They're not here for the flag, for the country, for liberty, for the Constitution. No, they came here because it was economically expedient. Now, of course, I'm a libertarian, and a lot of people would say, well, why shouldn't you believe in open borders if you're a libertarian? And quite honestly, I might be for open borders if there were some caveats to it. The first which is that anyone who is... You would have to get rid of all the benefits that the government gives people, like Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, welfare, any kind of assistance because you can't have non-citizens leeching off of the system. It isn't right, it isn't fair. And so we'd have to get rid of that. And we would also have to get rid of the minimum wage, at least as far as when it comes to undocumented workers, which of course is kind of what we have right now. And then you get into the people saying, oh, well, yeah, you know, this is unfair to them. Well, they're choosing to come here, so it must be better than what they had back there. But you see, when you have artificial price controls on wages and you have benefits to being over here, what you do is you create an incentive for people who should not be here to come here illegally. Now, if those incentives were removed, they'd probably just stay in their home country. And I think we can all agree on that. The other problem with the DREAM Act is that it has these arbitrary cutoff dates. Okay, Let's say he says, well, if you came here below the age of 10 and you're below the age of 30, I'm going to exempt you. Well, I came here when I was 11. Why should that be held against me? Okay, well, you know, below the age of 11. All right, well, I'm 31. Okay, well, below the age of 31. I'm 32. All right, 15. All right, I'm 50 years old. Okay, you too. I mean, where does it stop? Because the next group up is always going to demand the same treatment because the government cannot discriminate against people because... It's inherently wrong because our system believes that all men are created equal and divided by their creator with certain inalienable rights. And so anytime you have these arbitrary cutoffs, they always end up getting expanded and including everybody. It's just the way it works and the way it always will work in. So this is why it's a broken system. The other problem I have with it is it really discriminates against the people who were trying to come here legally because all of these undocumented minors and you know under 30 year olds who are true patriots 
are going to have to get in line. And of course, we can't have them being deported, so they're going to probably get preferential treatment. They're probably going to go ahead of people who have been waiting months or years for their green cards and their citizenship. And why? And also, since we're going to do this, and since it's by you know executive fiat, we're going to have to waive the fees, which means that we, the taxpayers, are going to have to pay for this all. And that's just ridiculous. So there's that. And finally... You know, as one reporter pointed out, and everyone got all mad at him, which I kind of thought was funny, uh, although you should not interrupt the president during his speech. It is kind of rude. So let me tiss tiss. Don't do that. But how is this going to benefit the American worker? You know, the fact of the matter is, is we're in a recession. Everyone wants jobs. And now we are saying, okay, well, you're allowed to work. You're allowed to work. You're allowed to work. They are going to be competing with American citizens for a finite amount of jobs, there aren't enough jobs to go around, and suddenly they're going to have more competition, and I think what he's really done is he's pissed off a big group of people, the unemployed, to try to get a smaller group of people, the Hispanic vote, which is asinine because he already had the majority of the Hispanic vote anyway. So, you know, this is just a really bad decision here, but what he's hoping is that all the Hispanics will get together and they'll be excited and they'll get their neighbors and their friends and their voting block will expand and make up the difference that he's going to lose by pissing everyone else off. Which is really his only shot at winning this election is dividing us into very small micro-marketed groups. He wants to play, you know, the whites versus the blacks, the whites versus the Hispanics, the men versus the women, the religious people versus the atheists, the Muslim versus non-Muslim, the rich versus the poor. He wants to get us all fighting, and he wants to say, okay, well, I'm going to take your vote, and I'm going to take your vote. I'm going to take half of this vote, and half of this vote, and I'm going to take this vote. And that's his strategy for winning this election, which is terrible. You know, this is the guy who ran in 08 as, I will unify us all. I will make the seeds, you know, recede from the shoreline. I am God! No, not really. He didn't say that. But what kind of guy thinks that because he's elected president, the seas are going to magically recede? I mean, he's ridiculous. And yet we elected him, so what am I to say? Okay. Again, my book is 2084, The Search for Love, Hope, and Faith. It's about the takeover of America by leftist forces using uh, the environment in personal protection, you know, we have to ensure everybody's safety to uh, take us over. And it's really good, and if you read it, I think you're going to see a lot of parallels as to what is going on today. And I also recommend my other book, War Journal. It's just a very nice story, and I think you'll enjoy it. I'm having a promotion on July 4th. You can download both of these for free to Kindle on July 4th, this one day only. If you like it, please recommend it to your friends. I really rely heavily on word of mouth. Long live the Constitution. Signing off.